Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the best podcast in the world for fitness, health, and entertainment. Of course, this is Mind Pump. Today, we're going to give away access to MAPS Aesthetic. It's one of our more popular bodybuilding style workout programs. Here's how you can win, okay? Subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, and then leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we post this video. If we pick your comment, what we'll do underneath, we'll notify you. That's why you have to have your notifications on and your and subscribe. We'll notify you that you won access to this incredible workout program, okay? Everybody subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, before we start the podcast, uh, we are running a sale. MAPS Aesthetic and our Extreme Fitness Bundle are both 50% off. All you got to do to check them out or sign up is go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code MAYSPECIAL with no space for the discount. All right, enjoy this podcast. That's how they do it in Europe, right? I mean, that that's sort of the MO. I think it is they do the less most bin- effective. They do less binge drinking, yeah. and they think it's because kids grow up around it. So yeah, it's, not, it's, like not, it's not novel. It's not bad. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. That, or, th- there's that a different half- connotation behind or it. Or you could do what my grandfather did when he, we would be over there for Sunday dinner or whatever. He'd bring us downstairs, and he'd bring my cousin and I down there, and yeah. we were like... I don't know, 10. And you go, hey, hey, you guys, come here. Let me show you something. And we'd go in this room and then you'd close the door so it's all quiet. We're like, what's going on? He'd try a little bit of this. And he'd pour, like, we don't know what it was. He's like, try this. Like and a he'd, shot. He'd watch us. And it was fucking grappa. Like, <laughs> like you guys gra- ever have grappa? What yes. Is, what is grappa? Bro, yeah. it is liquid fire. Oh, yeah. It's what? like pure burning alcohol. So when you're 10, you're like, Ugh. And he'd laugh. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, he's giving some wild turkey, like 151. Well, what's what's grappa? I've never even heard of that. You before. never had grappa? No, no, no. What is it? Like, what, what type of is it? A, it's a liquor, obviously. It's just hella strong liquor that burns your face. I don't know how. Is it, you don't know what kind though, is Doug? Do you is know? Is it any? made from grapes? It's made from grape skins, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, and it's supposed to be really strong, it's highly concentrated. It's hella. Is it like like strong. Ever, ever clear strong? I mean, is that what we're talking yeah, about? It's that yeah. strong, but it's like vodka strong at least. What, maybe you know more. what? You know what? What's the what's the what's the other really Really popular Italian one. Uh, um, the it tastes kind of like lemon. Oh, limoncello. Yeah, yeah. Don't let kids try that. You'll, lemon, you'll they'll see, love that's, it. See, that's why. Uh, yeah, I'm like, don't don't let them know that like some of them taste good. Yeah. <laughs> You, you got to give them all the shit. All the does. bad stuff. Yeah, like, like beer. Just like, I remember it took me forever to like beer. Yeah, beer, oh, yeah. beer and wine. Ugh. Limoncello, you you store it in the freezer yeah, is what you do. Yeah. And you store the glasses in the freezer. No, and that's, that's just good. like candy. Do yeah. you guys ever have, um, what's called, what's called, Fernet? Fernet Branca, I think it's called. Mm-mm. It's like this after dinner, they call it a digestif. You ever have those like where it like helps you digest or whatever? No. Have you heard of these? No, no, no. So it's got like, it's definitely an alcohol, but then it's got certain, you know, plants in there that are supposed to help you digest. And you know what? I Damn it. It fucking works. Mm. It's really weird. Like I had some at my cousin's house over the weekend. He gave me a little shot of it afterwards, and I maybe it's just because it's strong, and I get a little buzz. Well, I, I, I feel that about the no, I feel my that gut about does feel better. The Moscow Mule, I yeah. feel like makes my gut feel better. Pe- people have been touting it, it's got to be what it is, right? As having that quality forever, like a shot of gin a day is supposed to be really good yeah. for your gut, according to gin many or gin <laughs> yeah, manufacturers. Yeah, this sure. is, yeah, so the grappa, what it is, is a blend of grape seeds, stalks, and stems left over from winemaking. And it contains thirty-seven point five to sixty percent alcohol by volume. It's like the chicken nuggets Ooh. alcohol. What do you mean? Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> mm, chicken, chicken, nuggets. <laughs> chicken nuggy. The chicken nuggets. So it's very strong. So they wouldn't hire me for advertising. That'd be like hundred. <laughs> what is that? One hundred twenty proof? Yeah, is that getting what that'd all the be? leftovers. Dude, that is. It's, so I'm so sixty percent. It, it's it's, it's freaking hot. And my grandfather. Is that would, how that works? Yeah. And yeah, the yeah, first time hot. he gave it to us, he thought it was hilarious. The second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth time, right? Because we'd go over there. He'd make us. No, no, no. You have some right now. Like, oh, come on. No, no. It burns my face. Oh, that's okay. Uh, well, my my grandpa would take me to this pool hall and, uh, you know, they'd all uh, give me one of these, like, huge stogies to smoke. And I was only, like, 10 or something. You know? <laughs> what a, yeah, what dude. a different it, generation. Oh, my God. I, I would, like, turn green. Like, I, I was just like, because I didn't know that you just puff it. And so I'd end up, like, inhaling. I almost, oh, yeah. like, threw up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was I, I wanted to be cool because I was there with a bunch of old you know rough guys. I right? remember the first time my mom had made me smoke a cigarette and it made me because I asked right. I'm like, oh, I want to let me try. So now you have to finish. Yeah, it. yeah. That that was the deal. I was like, okay, if I let you try this, you got to have the whole thing. Okay, that sounds like a great <laughs> idea. Like when you're a kid trying to get it right. I thought was was I like seventh or eighth grade, something like that. Yeah. Oh, 
I remember throwing up afterwards. It was so terrible. Never wanted one yeah, again. Yeah, and I remember thinking, like, dude, why do people like this? Dude, this know. is disgusting. That's like, a it's a good strategy. No, it's a, it's a decent strategy. <laughs> speaking of, it uh, does work. Speaking of alcohol, um, I know we're going to Hawaii together. Yeah, and uh, that's going to oh, be a lot of alcohol wait, involved. Dude. We need. <laughs> There's going to be lava flowing. Oh, uh, do not, uh, please, do not forget. We need to have Zbiotics there. I do uh, not want to do that. Are they re- Are they restocked, Doug? Do you know if they're restocked? I know that uh, la- man. They were. They sold out last I month. Know. It's been high demand. I don't know if I. I, I think there's still a waiting list at least, but let me double check. Yeah, because yeah. la- I, I I don't know if I told you guys this. I know you guys don't get, pay attention sometimes to this stuff, but um, they put our advertising on hold for like yeah yeah mm-hmm. for a couple- pre-orders still. Oh wow, wow. yep, wow. dude, yeah. get some. You know why? Because it's one of those things that you try it. You know, do you guys remember trying all the stuff at the liquor stores that claim that stuff? I yeah. mean, I tried a bunch of the yeah the pills and the little drinks that they say is supposed to cure hangovers. And it might kind of work, but like nah. even then, like Advil was better. None you know, of them water. Were, none of them worked for me. And nothing. But this is like completely different. Nothing worked as well as the the concoction that Sal used to make for us first. Mm-hmm. So oh. that was remember that it was charcoal. It was uh, cocaine, yeah. charcoal. Well, no, food. I'm just kidding. <laughs> cocaine Cocaine helps bring you back. Yeah, to life. You'll feel yeah, better. A, Just no, kidding. No, it was no. it was it was charcoal, uh, electrolytes, and uh, was it Advil afterwards. Yes, I'll give it to you. Yeah. No, no. Zbiotics is on a whole different level. A lot of people don't know the origin story of how we actually worked with them. There was an article that I read on oh, the, that's right it, on the podcast because the author was like, "This stuff is crazy and it's weird and how it works." And I read the science. I'm like, "This is remarkable." Yeah. Then Zbiotics contacted us because they saw a boost in sales because yeah. we talked about. It. Yeah. yeah. Our audience responded right away. Then they sent us samples and we literally tested it. We tested it twice: once in private and another time we videotaped it. It's the famous drinking game that we oh did. Oh my God. And I can't I, believe we did that. And I'm telling you, it's so effective, it's dangerous because <clears throat> now I enjoy drinking occasionally. Whereas before, I just said, forget it. Nothing, oh, yeah. I feel like shit afterward. Not with Zbiotics. Now I feel okay oh, the no, day after. No, no. So uh, speaking of partners, you guys just reminded me of something I have to share with you that happened this morning. It was like, I was just kind of laughing about it because... So, you know, I think, Sal, you were the one that asked me to start looking for uh, a partnership with, uh, like, meals delivered to your house, like, a type of deal. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so I've, I've like, reached out to quite a few companies, and I'm just, you know, I'm in that process of, like, courting and trying to see who we really like and reading up on the company. And this company reached out to, uh, reached out to me on Instagram, like, maybe, I don't know, like, a month ago or so. And I just glanced at it and said, oh, okay, this is, looks interesting enough. Like, I, I kind of like what I see. So I sent it over to Katrina to follow up and say, give me on, give me on a phone call with the CEO and stuff. And then I, I can ask some questions and we could start, start the courting process or whatever. And so she calls me this morning. I'm on my way to work and she goes, Hey, did you, um, did you call or uh, reach out to that company eat to evolve? And I go, um, what do you mean? I said, I, I sent it over to you to follow up so I could start the, the conversation. And she goes, yeah, I know they, they sent me an email this morning about resending an offer. And I'm like, no, I didn't make an offer. I don't even know if they're somebody we want to work with. I just said, I, I'll get take a call so we can start the conversation. Mm. She goes, really? And and I go, yeah, no. She goes, well, what about Sal? And I said, no, Sal didn't do that. I said, he got, a, he got a message from them, sent it over to me. And I said, yeah, I already reached out to them. I'm going to have a conversation with them. And she's like, are you sure? Are you sure you guys didn't say anything or do anything? And I'm like, no. She goes, because I've never had somebody respond. I said, well, ask. I said, send back to them. I said, what's the, you know, what's the deal? Like, we didn't even send an offer. We didn't even say we're going to work with you guys. Why would you resend an offer? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. just to get some clarity. Because I said, you know what? Maybe it's a misunderstanding. Maybe they think you're another company or whatever like that. And she just text messaged me this. So I get this email back. Let me read it to you guys. You guys, you're going to crack up when you hear this. So oh, no. This. Okay. Well, well, no, I just, I. What'd I, you do, Adam? I, well, you're actually funny. <laughs> well, what did I do? No, or what did no. You do? What? Funny you say of me, right? So it says, no. um, hi, Katrina. I decided to rescind my offer after taking a closer look at Adam's Instagram. Oh. Which I'm glad I did. <laughs> Which I'm going like me, like, like, you, like yeah. I, yeah, that's a Sal thing, right? I know. I haven't seen anything it's offensive. Like really, like I'm, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm that bad, right? So, in October, like so we, she dug in, right? So back in October, Adam posted a quote unquote social justice warriors video. Oh no! <laughs> as a listen with as, that cartoon, yes. As a person of color, I do not feel comfortable entering into a what? working relationship with him. As someone who clearly values his right to voice his views, I'm sure Adam will appreciate me exercising my right to voice mine. Best regards. Oh, wow. Do you know which okay. one that is? Oh, you know, that? Do you that know which, cartoon? It was a yeah, pure satire. Yeah, Andrew, you have to post the, the, yeah. post the cartoon up so people can see.
team. If you've been offended, your feelings must be defended. The freedom of expression is a microaggression. Here comes Antifa Freddy. He's always ready to fight fascism with fascism. Starbucks windows don't stand a chance. Ethic enhancer. He's a systematic racism finder. I mean it. I I I. And by the way, I don't think I thought the, it was my, hilarious. And my caption doesn't. I don't think. Wait, who the hell gets offended? First of all, it's a it's satire. Yeah, it's total joke, and it's not even making fun of like good people. It's not making fun of people of color. Either. It's just it's just the fanaticism around you know being a social so, justice. Warrior. Okay, so that okay, I'm glad you said that because that was the first thing that that came to mind. I was like, what does you, you, you being a piece of person of color have anything anytime, to, yeah. anything to do with the, that wasn't even brought up in the video. By the way, anytime somebody opens up a conversation and says, "As a man, as a woman, as a person of whatever, as a whatever," you can almost guarantee the rest of it is they identify so strongly with an immutable characteristic that you know the rest of the message is going to be yeah. dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Your your opinion, of course, should be based off of your experiences. But your immutable characteristics, like, okay, like, didn't we learn that lesson, like, I don't know, decades ago, that we don't yeah. make that our entire identity? That's crazy. But that's a cartoon that's so weird. I, know. I mean, I'm so glad we're not pursuing them it's, now, but I just, I, it's like- it's To just, skim, though, like, and, and just get, like, the most surface of surface view of your character and just make that assumption right away, like, speaks a lot. On all, that one, I've, and I've done a lot more offensive shit than that, Yeah, for all sure. All anybody has to do is listen to three podcasts to know that we're- but you could do that to anybody is my point. Like, that's a bit petty. Yeah, that's that just seems crazy to me that that would be a deterrent for, you know, something well, that can well, help you, a lot of people. You know, I was telling Katrina because she's like, whatever. She's like, we don't obviously you wouldn't want to work with the company. Anyways. I was like, yeah, but I'm like, you know, what's interesting to me is like, I know that the the owners are two guys. So it's not the owners that are responding back to me. I'm like, this is somebody who works for them. Like, I would be pissed if one of our employees was having an interaction with a company that I might potentially want to work with, mm -hmm. especially uh, of like uh, the size that we are in the fitness and health space. Also what we stand for. Like right. this, that's so opposite of what we, know. Totally what we opposite. stand for. I yeah. know. That is really, really insane and stupid. But I, I will say this, I'm glad because we have a criteria. I don't know if this, for, this will be for our audience. Obviously you guys know what our criteria is. But we have a criteria for our partners that we work with. And it, of course, number one, one of the, one of the criteria is we have to like their product or their service, and we have to use it. It's not just that we like it. We also have to use it. Otherwise, it's hard to talk about. So we have to really believe in their product. But then there's more. One of the other criteria is we have to really like the people that we're working with. I don't care. Your product could cure cancer. If I hate you, I'm, it's going to be hard to work with you because I, it's hard to work with partners that you don't like. And here's some of the criteria of the people that we like to work with. You gotta you gotta be thick skinned. You gotta be able to have good discussion, good debate. You gotta believe in uh, good things, good people, um, and you gotta have you know good uh, I guess good moral compass. And so this person to me sounds very much like they're looking for problems that don't exist off of one post that was satire that you didn't even create. You reposted, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. So yeah. to, so it's like, would you even want to imagine listening to our podcast and trying to pick it? Every little comment and joke. Even, imagine going through my memes that I post every single yeah. day. With I know. That's why when she said it, I thought for sure I was going to get something that you did. I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> I tell Sal all the time. He kind of, <laughs> those memes, if they don't know you, you know what I'm saying? They're going to get really offended. But Weird. it was me, dude. I was like, you know what I feel like too? I feel like, mm. uh, you know, like it's like the, the girl who told me I don't want to go out with you and I never asked you out. Yeah. I didn't even ask you out yet. <laughs> How can you turn me down? You know what I'm saying? Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. fuck you. I didn't even, I did not even ask you out. You're already like breaking up with me. That's not even possible. Like, wow. Yeah. So I thought that was really funny. Wow. Was interesting Petty strategy. Yeah. That, right? What's so weird? Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. That's yeah, all right. Yeah. Hey, look, this, this is, you know, it's a market. Terrible so company. They can choose who they want to work with and who they don't. But man, if I was the owner, I'd be like, uh. Well, that's where I, yeah. as a, you know, as a CEO, I go, but like, have you listened man, to them I would at be, all? I would be, uh, I would be upset that somebody took the 
the initiative to go do something like that. Unless yeah. they they empowered her to do that. But I'm like, man, that's thankfully there's other companies, right? Not yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, you know? there's quite so, a few. Which is fun. It's like we wouldn't even we're not even close yet to even deciding that. I haven't even tried the food. It was like this was like the initial like conversation. It's like we're not even there yet for you to break up. Well, yet. this like, is what I like <laughs> companies like Base Camp or what was the other ones that like they just don't include any politics. Like that's just not something that I think that's going to be a new movement for a lot of companies. I think they're starting to move this direction of just like it's become so polarizing and I think it's it's so disruptive in the in the business yeah. in the business world. People are are fighting over stuff that's you know, so petty explain and explain to me how it's any different than having a religious affiliation and being like I don't like your religion so I'm you know I'm not going to work with you. Well, yeah. it's weird because I mean here, okay, here's the truth, right? Most people they believe what they believe or vote the way they vote because they want things to be better for people and themselves. Most people are good. Most people don't vote because they're evil a particular way. Most people just aren't evil. Now, of course, they have their own self-interest. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, you know, when looking at people that way, looking for issues that don't exist, that can cause a lot of problems. Here's the truth. The truth is m markets are one of the best peace-promoting things that we've ever seen in humanity because – you have people from all walks of life working together, and you have to figure it out for their own common interests. Like, okay, uh, you know, I don't necessarily know your personal views, but I do know that you make good product. I have things to trade with you. Let's work together. So you get introduced to each other. You get introduced to different ideas. People work together. Mm -hmm. That's what part of what makes us. Uh, but it's funny because that post was literally. It was a joke. It wasn't yeah. even you posting like some cra crazy opinion. No, 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 it was not even that. I didn't even think that much into it. I thought it was. I thought it was very h hilarious when I saw it going viral or whatever like that, and so I shared it. I thought, oh my god, the, to go back and do that. So yeah, I tell you what, though, no you, sense you, of humor. You do Come some, on. you do some bullshit like that working for me. Your ass is fired. Like that's like you do not have the you do not have the autonomy to go make decisions like that with business relationships. That and for all you know, like CEO, that we may end up have loved the owners of the company. So. Yeah. And you've immediately mischaracterized us. Yeah. Completely. I, I know. Oh, Isn't that man. funny, though? That's uh, annoying. Yeah. That's the that, first time that's ever happened, though. I thought that was really interesting. You yeah. know, Katrina was like, ah, I haven't had anyone ever resend an offer before, before we even put an offer in. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, all right. Yeah. yeah. I totally thought it was a mistake. I was like, oh, it must be a mistake. Yeah. It's not that. Hey, hey, excuse me. You know, uh, I'm not sleeping with you. I didn't even fucking ask you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I wasn't going to anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You Sorry. had that look on your face, though. Sorry, e to yeah. evolve. Yeah. We weren't going to bang you anyway. Uh, yeah. We're not evolved. Yet. Yeah, you're not yes. hot yeah. enough. Oh, so, well. First to have sex with you. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. Hey, so uh, I read a, cra a hilarious article. Well, not hilarious. Crazy article the other day. A shark uh, vomited, I guess, uh, on the beach and mm. then threw up a freaking arm. <laughs> you, oh. you, human arm. That's not true. Yes, it is. That is not a true. Human yeah, arm. I'm going to pull up the article. You have to show me that. No. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the article. This just came up right now, recently. It was just a. It was. A, it was. A, it was just a crate. I don't know if Dude, it was recent. That's gruesome. Yeah. yeah. Was it like pre-digested or is it like intact? Oh, here I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to pull it up right I here. Mean, so. Uh, Give me the gory details. Okay, here it is. So during an unassuming day at Kugi Aquarium in Sydney. Imagine the guy whose arm that is. He's like, oh my God. Dude, you found it. <laughs> their their latest attraction, uh, which was a 14-foot tiger shark, threw up a human arm sporting a, a tattoo of two boxers sparring. So they actually can even tell that it was no. attached. Yeah, Wait, dude. Okay, dude. this just came out. There's got to be a guy who's missing an arm who got a bit off by a shark that knows. Well, I'm trying arm. to read into it a little bit. This it might have happened be. a long time ago, and they wrote about it just now. Oh, because maybe he finally put it together. Yeah, hey, that's, that's my arm. Did you imagine that? It's like, bleh, and then you look at. Oh shit! I mean, especially with a tattoo to definitively like. Are you point being? Out, oh no, here arm. it is. Are you being trolled? No, no, here it is. This is an old. It was always oh, a long time ago. It was 1935. So check this oh, out. Oh my! What? No, no, no. Hold on, hold you're, on. You're reporting on a 1935. No, no. Article. Breaking news. No, no, check this out. <laughs> Thanks. Mind pump ahead of the other curve. Yeah, no, this just in. We landed on the moon. Thanks to the, the, the distinctive tattoo and fingerprints, the victim's brother was able to identify the body part as the left arm of James Jimmy Smith, a 45-year-old England-born amateur boxer who worked at a booze-soaked billiard saloon in downtown Sydney. So, oh, that's weird. Do you imagine that? That's how you solve a crime? 
pull it out. Oh, it looks like they finished well, so, okay, the wait, sharks. Did you? I didn't hear. Did you say how far from when he got his arm bit off to when they they found the arm? I think it was the same time, right around the same. I uh, think they digest it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. like, how could you imagine that? You well, see that's it? why I'm like, why is it making the news right now, though? Huh? Why? Why is it? There was it? Was it? Where it, where it, it find that? Yeah, they're just writing about it, and yeah. I read it, and I thought that was <laughs> that was really weird, it's unique, and, and hilarious, and crazy. Yeah, very. Uh, I didn't know we're pulling articles from 1935 to share. It wasn't a 1935 article. <laughs> It was an article that was now, and uh, and because and dude and uh, tiger sharks, that's not normal for them, right? Well, I don't know. I've actually heard that it either it's tiger or thresher sharks, or whatever. It's like in in Australia have been are, are a lot more violent than um, great whites, mm -hmm. really. But yeah, but great whites are a lot more. You know, obviously they are bigger, huge, yeah, yeah but and more dangerous if they do attack. But they are less likely well, dude, to attack. A fourteen foot tiger shark is pretty yeah. big. Yeah, well, big enough to fuck you and up. They, they 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 make it closest to um, shore. I think so. The where people sharks. are swimming. Yeah, uh, that they're a lot more likely you're you're going to encounter. I one. didn't know that. I actually assumed that uh, great whites were the only sharks that we're afraid of that would potentially eat people. I didn't no, know. there's yeah. some big ass. Uh, there's there's well, there's lots Makos of big can attack people. Uh, Makos, yeah. uh, tiger. I'm trying to think of what the other uh, what the other ones are. I think those are the only like ones. a lemon shark in there. That, lemon sharks. Thresher shark. yeah, yeah, thresher. So you know, when I was a kid, I went through like a period of like I was like totally into sharks. It was like a big thing. Did you ever do that, Justin? Did. Yeah, dude. And then Shark Week came out. Yeah. But that was a little later. I would have been totally into it. Yeah. Lemon, I was all into sharks. lemon sharks are the ones that like they look like they have too many teeth. Like the teeth are like yeah. looking all crazy. Yeah, and then kind of sticking out. Yeah, a I've bit. seen those. But when yeah. I was a, there was a whole period. Did you guys, did you guys ever go through a dino, dinosaur phase when you were kids? Of course, dude. Yeah, this uh, was a thing. My La, son, La Brea tar pits. Dude, my I son, visited that. My son is on that right now. It's so cute. So he, wow, is the, the new word he's saying. Wow, and he has this. He has this <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, he has this big dinosaur book. Maybe I'll share this with Andrew so he could share the little clip it's really cute so he has this massive dinosaur book that he got from his cousin so they uh, his wow. cousin nathaniel uh, gave it to him because he was starting to get interested in dinosaurs mm -hmm. it's a really cool book it has like by the way too i didn't even know there was this many wow. dinosaurs which i didn't know oh, and it's dinosaur. gone way beyond brontosaurus t-rexes and like stegosaurus you know that was like our staples right i'm gonna now sound like, like a, i'm gonna sell like a complete moron i thought there was like 20 there's like, like a I really did, there were only 20 dinosaurs yeah, 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 like, and they have feathers now and all this okay shit. so hold on so maybe so this blew jessica away she didn't know this either so did you know a lot of people don't know this did you know that the amount of time that dinosaurs were on earth like the amount of time humans are on earth is like a sliver compared to the amount of time dinosaurs run. Dinosaurs roam the earth for like hundreds of millions of years. Humans have been on here for like a blink of the eye. Yeah. They definitely lived here well, for a long time. I mean, that's all, but that gets a little tricky because they found Gobekli Tepe, which they've actually had paintings with them with big, huge beasts that look what? like dinosaurs. So humans lived with dinosaurs? It, it's, it's, you know, it's something to consider. Well, like, let's ask Doug. Human history. Doug's been around a long time. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's a lot further back than than yeah, me and Bam Bam. Yeah. yeah, Doug, did you ride a dinosaur to school or was yeah. it a bus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but dabba do. Yeah. Yes, dude. <laughs> but yeah, when I told Jessica that, she's like, "What?" I'm yeah, like, dude, it's I didn't been know that. Like, I didn't know that either. I, I was never a big dinosaur guy. I didn't. I was, what were you into I when you were dinosaurs. a kid? I don't know, like micro machines and Hot Wheels stuff like that. Yeah. Like I was into that. You were never into like like science stuff. No, really, no, no. I actually did not like science, dude. I was not a yeah. big science guy. He's always trying to de debunk it, right? Remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know that. Dating, but this is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you never watched uh, 321 Contact? I mean, it, it, yeah, some, you know, that was a great show. It sometimes it comes off a little religious to me. That's why. Maybe that's why I was, uh, I was you know, it sounds, I was right there. I was, I was trying to like, one proves the other. You know, I was always trying to play that game. Yeah. Oh, I, I loved it. I mean, there is, you got to think there's a, there's quite a bit of faith in science also. Sure. I mean, I mean there's a, like, even just with your carbon dating, I mean, for it to be. No, they can test it dude that's they, not true what do you mean they know how quick they they know how fast carbon decays they know there's a, there's a, a consistent Bro, the fact speed. that there is nobody no. with anything written that goes back hundreds hundreds of millions of years that ago matter. No, they, 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 can, does, they can prove they, they existed they don't know how they behaved that's true this that's is, true yeah and they're always like just characterizing them based off of like something they just make up yeah look it's, if you just, you still have to have faith you still have to believe that 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 is that is accurate you need you need faith for math no, it's not just math. It's math and science. Okay, science in in, in many respects, oh not all God. respects. You sound like someone who drank the Kool Aid, dude. That's it's what not you Kool Aid. Sound. What are you talking what are you about? There, there, what? There is still there is. Bro, your headphones work because <laughs> yeah. science. 
it, it sh- made them. That's okay. Okay, we're not. T- we're talking about carbon dating right now that goes back hundreds of millions of years. If there's nothing other to, to cross-reference it with, you just have to have faith that it's accurate. Okay, there's a speed and at, what which it, car- at, at which carbon decays what uh, is, over Doug, time, look and this, it's consistent. What, what is, uh, to how accurate is carbon dating? To the day? No, it's not to the day. Okay, <laughs> so how much room for air does it have? Okay. And, and does that air grow as the millions of years go? It does. Okay. However, so, they're not going to say this existed, you know, you know. Well, they do core ten samples all over the world too, which then yeah. they can like they could trace back to like certain big catastrophic oh, events. Oh, look at this, Sal. Yeah. Carbon dating is unreliable for objects older than thirty thousand years. That's still a long time. Okay. However, not uranium- in comparison to hundreds of millions, Sal. Hold on, what's that's the, what's a Google boom? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hold on, <laughs> uranium thorium dating may be possible for Bro, objects. Bro, all my point is that it you still it still relies on some faith, bro. Still relies sure, on some the faith. stuff that we don't know, we have to. That's right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's only, right. That's only according. That's to my doc- argument. Doctors my, in my there. argument doesn't that's isn't saying that I'm not trying to say carbon dating's wrong. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Just like yeah. I'm not saying I don't think there's a god either. I'm not going to come out and say uh, some bullshit yeah. like that. But I will say that it you you have to rely on some faith with it, bro. So of course. So that's what what. Turn- but it's not all faith. It's mm. not. It's not all that. Just like the, so are religions. Like there's a lot of reasoning. there's a lot of things in religion that they can prove. There's a lot of stuff that's historical in the yeah, Bible that they can go, they can go back to. But you're comparing two different things. Like science is based on the scientific. Keep uh, drinking the, the Kool-Aid, guy. No, no, no. Keep there's a scientific Kool-Aid. method. It's two different things. You can't compare spiritual wisdom to science. You can't compare the two because they're totally different. They're both very valuable. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that it still requires faith. You still are b- believing in something that you cannot actually. P- cross-reference and prove. So now here's the mm. difference. A scientist will say, this is our best guess. Exactly. Okay. That's so not the go. same as faith. Faith is, this is what happened. This is what I believe. And that's it. It's very mm. different. Scientists will say, we think this is, and this is our best guess. And here's why. Very different than faith. Well, you ask somebody with faith. And, and, and it's only reliable when it becomes law. Mm-hmm. Right, because they've tested it over the hypothesis over and over again, and sometimes it doesn't replicate, and so then it yeah. doesn't become law. Yeah. So it's just like it's it's just this constant thing that I, I think we should always like look into it and reassess yeah. it. Yeah, but, but I do think it's a mistake to say that it, to compare the two because they're both different. Yeah, but you don't start the sentence with you know it's our best guess that this is three hundred million years. You say this is three hundred million years old. Mm. You say it as if it's a fact. Well, you don't lead. You do not lead with. Oh, I, we believe that it's three hundred yeah. million. You say it's three hundred million years old. Yeah. Yeah, That's like why I'm calling you out on. Hold, it. hold on a second. Three hundred million years. Let's say the error rate is you know ten percent. It's still. 200 million, at least 200 million years old. Which 30,000 is what the number Doug just pulled up. So that's still- Well, we got to look up what kind of accuracy and stuff. But that's our best, you're right. That's our best way of of, of testing these things. Well, when when did the Olmecs uh, roam the earth? What is that? I know. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. They don't know. They don't know how long they've been on the earth, but they know they existed. Justin just made his point. Boom. So what the fuck, science? Thank you, Justin. Yeah, Thank dude. you. Yeah. I, uh, what about the giant humans? You ever seen those yeah. old ruins where they see like these yeah, huge Yeah, but femurs? now you're getting into like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's uh, that's up for grabs. My point, but though. But the Omex I, are real. I just, I didn't get into it as a kid. As a kid, I didn't, uh, I was actually more into math. I actually liked math. I mm. loved math uh, a lot more because I did. Like, you know, two plus two is always four. There's no way, other way you can look at it. It's a fact, you know, yeah, it's yeah. Law, right, so I, I enjoyed that stuff, and then I was into sports and cars, and yeah. yeah, yeah. So I never went through a phase where I, I mean, I'm more into science now as I've, I'm yeah. older. You know, I'm, I'm very interested. Even though it's obviously. all bullshit, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you paint me like Dude, that. I don't like do to that to me. Out. I just want to know like the inner workings of things, like how things work, like why we're here, all that stuff. No, like, I'm intri- I'm very intrigued by it now. I mean, that's half of why we could, we're all friends and we we enjoy this and speculating and doing yeah. those things like that. But I was not as a young kid. I was you know I was into playing sports and into cars and into things like that and baseball cards and shit, you know, yeah. did not go through. No, that. I went through like a, a dinosaur phase. I went through a phase of uh, sharks. I went to a phase of like the Bermuda triangle. Like oh, there was yeah. a whole period there where the Bermuda triangle was like all I read about for yeah. the longest time. Oh, yeah. It just, so yeah, and then I got into cults, which you guys know. Like it's just like a, a pastime. For oh, me. cults. Yeah, cults. I thought you said cults. Which yeah, that, I mean I to like me, horses. to like, me, what? that's a, that's you have a, a horse. You have a horse calendar. Yeah, I just, you know, that's a very natural progression. I feel <laughs> like them. because you were somebody who challenged when you were in church as a kid, right? Yeah, so always. It, it I makes was always sense asking questions, and they weren't uh, very good about like providing answers in terms of like 
uh, <laughs> like substantial answers that like were grounded in reality. Uh, so I was always like, ah, oh, like I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out. And, uh, so I've been, I've been watching, there's this new series on HBO max that I'm loving so far. It's about heaven's gate. So oh, are you guys dude. familiar with that? Are those no. the people that poison themselves waiting for the <clears throat> Haley Bop, comet. Haley Bop comet? Yeah. yeah. So it, it <laughs> Adam's like, I know, just crashed yeah, my brain. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, like the Rajneesh and like, uh, I don't know how you pronounce that, but that was another cult that was like in, in Oregon. Uh, uh, apparently there's a few of them that came out of Oregon, but it, <laughs> so this heaven's gate one was crazy because it had like the most, um, uh, suicides in, in one, uh, one event in the U S like it, 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 it like beat out like everything else, uh, you know, cult wise, like this had their number one, their number one, <laughs> they did it. Wow. <laughs> um, but all these people that that found their way into the cult is really what I'm fascinated by because like a lot why? of them are really bright, mm -hmm. like really smart people that are just like, for some reason, uh, they just want, they want more, you know, they, they want to figure out more. And it's, and just that bit alone, like the two leaders, like it, it's just so interesting how they can take a lot of familiar information, like from Christianity. And then they, 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 they get into revelation where it's a little bit like, you know, up for interpretation. And they, they all of a sudden claim that they're the witnesses, right? Okay. So now all of a sudden they have, you mm -hmm. know, part of that perspective that they can, pass on and really what was misinterpreted was you know that we weren't factoring in ufos and so now you're bringing in new you know sort of uh uh you know myth that 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 is in the the social construct that people like can grab onto and so you know this pulls in like intellects well this is what i feel like this is what's going to happen with this whole uh, woke fitness movement right mm. now right it's you take a little bit of truth and stuff like that and then it gets it's it gets very in. it's very cultish yeah. with their belief systems yeah, yeah. absolutely that's what makes it kind of dangerous but I, did, did they all kill them? So they waited for the comment, and the idea was that they killed themselves so that their so they could their spirit could basically like, hitch a ride. Yeah, hitch a ride. In a <laughs> yeah. sense. I was like, <laughs> and it, like just the logic there. And I they don't drink. Know. And was it that they drink poison? Was that yeah, how they drink did it? poison. Okay, have you ever seen? So you don't know who this is, right? No, I don't okay. know anything. So about you've never seen the the oh my god, the heavens gate. This videos? guy has the ultimate cult face, bro. Like the, ultimate cult. Doug, face? if you like, can I'll, find, I'll, like, please, please, please and right here, put his face right here. Please let me see what a cult face looks like, bro. You gotta watch. That's oh, him right yeah. there. Oh yeah, that's yeah. very cult face. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. I can get he's down perfect. With that. Wow. But but he's not even the main like originator of this cult. It was a lady, and it was I think they named themselves T and Do, as in like the two different like Do Re Mi Fa So La T wow. Do. Now, like, do you think do you think that a, a a lot of these guys that that start these cults do you think they they have the in, the intentions of manipulating all these people, or do you think they just really believe themselves? Well, I feel he, like you have to believe. He killed himself. Narcissists. Too. Yeah. Right. I think that they believe in their own shit and yeah. they're and they're something charismatic and oh, magnetizing I saw, I saw that. I about saw that. them, right? Like they're, yeah. they're they're charismatic enough to get all these people to believe in what they're saying. How many people died with this one? Do you know? Yeah, that's a uh, Doug. Can you look that? I, it was a substantial number for sure. Wow. So by the way, HBO Max again with another great. Doug. By the this, way, it's really so good so far. So this, I'm not finished yet. Thirty nine corpses. 30, 39? Yeah. So that's the record, huh? All right. That's the record. <laughs> so, Suicide record yeah. here in the States. It's so 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 here's uh, what's funny. Knowing this about Justin, right, that he's like super like into cults and how he's like skeptical of like all this kind of stuff. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. So when I first met you guys. Oh, yeah. Well, he was very <laughs> Justin was super like, who's this <laughs> yeah. silver tongue devil? I'm yeah. not going <laughs> to. He was all weird about yeah, it. Yeah, now well, you see, dude. <clears throat> that When I see these, that's what I think. I'm like, man. Do you have cult potential, what if this? I think you got a little bit. I always, <laughs> I always think, what if this <laughs> cult leader actually you. shifted this to something? Like, I bet you that guy could have built an amazing company because the, the attributes that of it course. takes. Use that for to get, positive. To get buy-in by a, a large group of people to like basically kill themselves for you. I mean, you right. could have you could have built the most successful company, like one of the most successful companies in the world if you have yeah. that kind of power. Instead, right? he wanted to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's where it is. And everybody died. And everybody died. That's crazy. There was that other guy. Wasn't that that one guy that took Dude, a Kool-Aid bunch... gets a big hit from all these things, right? Like, that, <laughs> like you think about that? Like, what what bad uh, where did uh, publicity for them? You know, I used it, but where does that saying come it's from? It's from a different cult. From Guyana, the Jim Jones. Yes. they. Yeah. Now, he took a bunch of people. And where'd they go? Did they go Guyana. to South South, South, Guyana, South America, South America, South America mm -hmm. and he t and they all built their own paradise where they would all live and it was a compound. And mm -hmm. then the way that they all killed themselves was with Kool Aid, poison Kool Aid. Yeah, so that's where the term. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes. You're from. drinking the Kool Aid. Drinking yeah. the Kool Aid. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All a lot of these terms come from shit that actually God, happened, just, like going postal. Everybody mm -hmm. should have a nerdy friend like you guys. You know, I think. <laughs> 
if you're a cool person out there and you're watching, you need to find yourself a nerd like Sal. As I'm sort of the conduit of like cool yeah. guys and nerds. Hey, this is this is Adam's like. How can I say I'm cool? No, you yeah. know what Katrina says. In, in, not in a you way, know what Katrina like, says like, when directly she, uh, when we talk about this. On the, no, yeah. no, she calls me out when we talk about this on the podcast. She goes like, I don't know why you reference like you're not a nerd like the two. You are just as much of a fucking nerd as they are. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I'm attracted to it. I said, I'm yeah. very attracted to Everybody it. Everybody has a nerdy you're side. You're just nerdy in a different yeah. way. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You remember when you whatever, were, babe. Remember when you were a kid. Uh, nerd. Nerd. Do you remember the acronym for nerd when someone would say you're a nerd? It'd be like, oh, that's okay because it stands for normal, educated, radical dude. Do you guys remember uh, that? Oh my god! No, do you? But you, you, you probably recited that. You definitely do. Can we make him a t-shirt? No. Can we make him a nerd? Normal, normal educated, educated, radical. I'm dude. making you a t-shirt. Radical right. dude. I want that. Yeah. Stop doing my voice, Jessica. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't sound like that. I haven't done it in a while. All. Hey, I got some more cool information on uh, creatine. Let's hear it, nerd. Creatine. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you really got him going. Yeah. You know, by the way, these days, nerds run the world. Style. This yeah. is true. This yeah, is they true. Do. So this anyway, true. Um, cool information on creatine. Some more information. Number one, I've been reading studies on creatine and depression. Did you guys know that creatine actually has some antidepressive effects on people, man. So they'll find that when people cool supplement facts. it, that that they'll notice a reduction in depressed uh, like symptoms. Now, do you think that's just because of the boost of energy that you're going to get from it? Well, yeah, I mean, caffeine does the same thing, yeah. stuff. Yeah. all right. that stuff, right? But, but obviously, creatine is very healthy as well. Here's another interesting study. They did a study where they had people who had an injury. Um, or, well, actually, the way they did the studies, they had people immobilize one of their arms. And they gave half of them creatine, the other half not creatine, just to see, because when you don't move something, let's say you break your arm or whatever, you lose a lot of muscle very quickly. Just because they supplemented with creatine, they lost less muscle and less strength than people who didn't. So if you're going into surgery wow. or you have a broken bone or an injury. So for just for preservation. And you want to reduce the muscle loss and strength loss that comes from that, supplementing with creatine uh, is part of a good strategy. I'm so surprised Man. that we don't see more like a food companies like. It's uh, coming. Yeah. Yeah. Putting it in. You know how we saw the protein movement that we you called like years sure. ago? Sure. Like, when are we going to see that with creatine? Like, creatine, it's coming, dude. Creatine just going to start. To I can see like, it like infiltrating like some of the the sports drinks for sure. Like, it already has EA done that. Bang has done that. Yeah, yeah, no, like, that's already that's that. already happening. Yeah. Yeah. So that's already and, and I'm I'm saying like just normal, just like, normal. Like, the way we the way we bars and yeah, stuff. the way we do like vitamins and things in cereal yeah. for sure. Like, when is it going to be like creatine cereal for your kid? Like, yeah. I oh, wow. why and and it's not really that expensive. Creatine's one of the cheaper supplements that you can get out there in bulk. So I would think that they would sprinkle it in, in there. In fact, so you could there, say that. there are studies. Not on pregnant women, but they did these with animals where they gave the animals some creatine and the, the, the baby, their babies or whatever when they were born came out healthier uh, and stronger. I, I think this is going to be a, a supplement that they're going to recommend to everybody yeah. at yeah. some point. Speaking of Bang, you guys ever see a picture of the, the CEO of Bang? Of course, He dude. looks exactly as you would imagine. Yeah. Have you ever seen him? Oh, I, uh, what does he have, like highlighted tips? Bro, did, did you see him? I, like. I tried to create a character around him. I didn't use it for a video, but like he was like my... Total muse. Imagine the guy that invented Bang Energy Drink. Well, you, yeah. they, you, I think you had the. What do you think he looks like? He's, he's I, got I said, patchy bald hair. I he's got like this, like Hawaiian shirt and this stupid gold, gold chains. chains and, dude, yeah, uh, watch this. Oh, uh, dude, he's like your ultimate. Uh, like, it, oh yeah, yeah. And he's like, ah, I'm Bang. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> That's it right there, bro. <laughs> He looks exactly, look at that picture right there in the middle. Yeah. Exactly. I remember the first like fitness convention that I went to uh, when Bang was first coming on Ugh. the market and like they must have had their, their, their booth. First of all, they had one of the biggest booth areas like rented out yeah. and there must have been 50 people there representing them. 45 of them were, you know, girls in booty shorts and, yeah. and, and, and like bras. That's it. I was just yeah. like, it's oh, like if God. every supplement company uh, had sex with monster energy drink. You know, then, then they came out with Yeah, him. totally. Yeah. It's funny that you say that. You know, it's funny. Uh, a friend of mine did a post on Instagram the other day and talked about the negativity with media and its advertising to women. And they were saying that it's because it's male-controlled media and it's men doing all the stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 man. They're not, the guys are not the ones buying it. You know, we, like, just like what you just said with these girls in booty shorts, the, the whole reason why they do that is because it sells. Yeah. It'll stop the second we stop buying their shit. Like if right. you see a company's marketing, I recommend people do this. If you see a company's marketing so and you say though. that's not Does it not really good. sell though? I mean, does it? Yeah. 
I mean, obviously. I, I mean, have you ever heard something like, you know, I picked Bang Up because, man, there was like 40 hot chicks in bikinis. I don't think that they, you're saying that. I know, but I mean, but if you're, okay, you're, if, subconsciously, you think that's what people are doing? Well, they're, look, they're, they're buying it because of Look that? at the target audience, right? You're a 25 year old dude. You want an energy drink. You're walking to the supplement place. Over yeah. here is like one with a chart about how effective their supplements are. Over here. Or I, is it just that the other companies in the space, the energy space, have used those marketing tactics and then he's just trying to be competitive against those companies? I think it's just more of like, like just marketing rules. They say it takes an average of like three times before you see a company, yeah. right? Before you make a purchase. I think that like, you know, it's it's totally cemented in my mind that I can picture that walking into that convention yeah. and there was hundreds of booths. Guess which one stands out in my yeah, mind? Of course. So now so why does it stand out? Because of all the girls. Music. That's right. Right. So they literally to, have stripper poles. So that's why it, 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 I think it works, right? Because I it's it's yeah, I it gets your attention. But, I mean, it would, but so would a bunch of naked dudes running around with bang. And the, uh, I don't know. It would be not the same thing. Yeah. It would not okay. So a naked dude dancing typically doesn't even get the attention of women. It, they tend yeah. to be like, "Ugh, get me away from that." Mm. The the girls tend to sell better to girls. Yeah, and we've guys. tried that angle. Didn't but my, my point is this: if you don't, if you think that something's negative or portraying a negative, what just don't buy their shit. If everybody did that, man, oh boy, would this shit change very quickly. Well, speaking of friends posting stuff, I don't know if you guys saw Ben Greenfield posted uh, just yesterday, and I did not know that Chili had this. So I want so Chili, our partner, has this gravity blanket i believe it weighs 25 pounds doug you can look it up for me oh and i love weighted blankets i know and you know i've actually never tried one i've heard all kinds of great things about but what's cool about this one is it plugs into your your chili unit so you can either cool it or heat it oh shit yeah, you see cool, a cooling so blanket? now from the top and the bottom and it's yes right. and it's a gravity oh so i make a nice cold burrito i'm ordering <laughs> just, <laughs> just, like just like a cold burrito justin's a steak burrito are uh, you looking it up doug right now for me steak in there uh, what's the yeah. weight on i think it's 25 pounds right is that heavy? I mean, that sounds heavy to me. For it is. Heavy. I have a I have a ten pound one at home, mm -hmm. and that feel. By the way, gravity blankets are really good for people with anxiety. There it is, right there. Oh yeah, they're they're fantastic. I I bought Courtney one for that reason specifically. And so what are the like be on the couch with that on, and it helps uh, you know calm her down, settle her bit. down, or yeah. whatever. Fifteen pounds. Oh, let's see what size that is. Yeah, there might be different options, but 15 is even is really good. Yeah, I, mean, I, I thought said, I, I have a 10. I thought I heard Ben say 25 pounds is what I thought I heard him say. Yeah. Well, so, Ben's going to go or up. higher. I thought I heard, I th it was either 25 or like 50, I thought. So I'll have to look back at this. Damn, a post. 50 pound blanket? I don't know. <laughs> I know. I, that I, might be a little like excessive. a little kid on my chest. It looks yeah. to me only the 15 pound. Yeah. 50, oh, maybe he said 15, I thought 50. Maybe? Yeah, maybe that's what happened. Know. Bro, 50 pounds would be a little... Like, well, I know. It, it might be It got my attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> ah, yeah. Honey, honey. <laughs> what? I can't wake up. I can't get out of bed. Yeah, that would bother me. Just, if it's too heavy, you guys, like, uh, I hate when people, uh, what's it called? Short tuck the sheets. Oh, at the bottom, yeah. you know, because my feet I can't do it. I, yeah, I my feet need too big like, to stretch. Yeah, yeah right. so. well, it's not just that, but you don't want your feet to fold out, like right? This, right? Or, so, or push back. Yeah. So Jessica's like, got like freedom. Ridic she's got ridiculous mobility in this direction, so she could flex her. Is that no? That's extend, right? Her yeah. ankles. Yeah. And she could put them out real. Like she's got this crazy toe point, so she'll lay in bed like this. My feet don't Plant do that shit. The dorsal flex. Yeah, yeah. They, they they pull up like this. I yeah, and so then you you get like cramps in your toes because it rolls yeah, your toes dorsal over. I hate that. You know, why, why don't you like it? Because, dude, it's just like, it's not a comfortable state for me. You know? How do you like, like I want, uh, Dude, I freedom. them. You know, just open. Yeah, I, I, I like I to rip the sheets out. I'll even hang my feet I out. I can't tuck them in. I'm a, I'm a one leg under and one leg over the sheet guy. I like the sheets in between my legs. One leg under, one leg over. Wow. Spoon the sheets. Yeah, just, spoon, yeah. Man. No, I'm just ready to just, rock and roll. Just yeah. making love <laughs> to it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Real quick, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free stuff. We have a ton of free stuff that we give our listeners. Great information. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is Olivia from Toronto, Canada. Hi, Olivia. How can we help you? Hey, guys. I'm a big fan of your show. I, uh, I actually just started listening a few weeks ago, and I'm like binging a few episodes every day. It's awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, wow, noob. I just bought Matt's Performance. I've been doing it for, I just did it for a week now. Um, I'm a week into it, but I was wondering if there's any changes or modifications I can make to the program to enhance my uh, performance in my sport, which is football, um, like American football. Oh, very wow. cool. What, uh, what position? So I play wide receiver and quarterback, uh, mainly quarterback in the summer and then wide receiver for my university. 
Awesome. And then is and this is uh full full on American football, so it's tackle, correct? Uh no, it, so it's contact flag. Um I guess I should have specified. So okay. we we block um and we have like an O line and a D line, but we don't wear equipment. We pull flags instead of tackling. So it's more um it's more speed related than than I guess strength. Okay. So the so the couple things I would recommend. One is uh continue to practice the skills of your particular sport. So sometimes the mistake that people make when they start working out to improve their performance is they trade skill training with just getting stronger in the gym. Um, and this is a this is not necessarily a good idea because if you get really strong but you lose some of your skill, then that strength on the field doesn't translate very well. So make sure you continue with your skills training. As far as modifying the workout, um, MAPS performance is really, really well put together for, mm-hmm. uh, for, for general overall performance. The modifications would be need to be very, very specific to the individual, and I would focus mainly on uh, areas that you notice you tend to have pain or mobility issues. So if you notice that you have issues like in your hips or your knees uh, or your shoulders, especially after playing you know, a really intense game, then I would use a program like uh, MAPS Prime Pro to identify those areas because that will give you the most bang for your buck in terms of the performance on the field. Yeah, I'm curious as to you know what what you see in there that you want to modify a little like more specifically towards football because it's pretty close uh, to something I would program to a football player kind of going off season then bringing them into season. Um, you know, there's some things that you can do if you are well versed in Olympic lifts or, or you can do a hang clean. That's, you know, the opportunity there when, you know, we have high pulls like programmed in there. That's something that I do uh, suggest like some athletes, if they have training already uh, where they could substitute uh, and add a little bit more, uh, you know, type like power lifts uh, or, or Olympic lifts rather uh, in that direction. So other than that, I think it's pretty specifically. Well, what about built for that? What about, what about, I, I mean, what do, what do you think, Justin, about adding either like some footwork work drills to mobility days? So I could see like mm. acceleration, deceleration, mm-hmm. working on and doing like footwork drills um, that would carry over into her sport on mobility days. Sure. Like I could, uh, yeah. And, and even in phase three, I mean, we have like it's it's speed power. And so there's a lot of acceleration, deceleration type uh, explosive moves, uh, you know, that you're going to be working on. I, I do see some some value in footwork. However, uh, you know, if you're going to get more specific in, in the endurance part of it, that's where you can structure it around, uh, you know, and time it around the amount of, of, of effort that you're going to put out per play. So you, you can do more like 50 yard sprints. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking, this, I, I'm not like, of course, the way the programming is set up is to, to get her better overall on that. Uh-huh. But I mean, very specific drills for a wide receiver and a, and a quarter or a wide receiver or a quarterback. So like a throwing drill, yeah. like a run, foot, run your patterns. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, run your drills. run your your patterns. Doing the takeoff for wide receiver stuff. Accelerating your cuts. Yep. Um. And just in those short bursts and and p- p- programming that on like mobility days. Since the program itself on foundation foundational days are going to give her the overall strength. Yeah. I I would I would focus on maybe adding yeah. those. And into when the you routine. do that, just make sure you don't go too intense with it for the mobility days. Uh, there is like so as you get further in the program, you know it actually focuses more on the endurance, uh, you know endurability portion of it. So where I would probably add even more of that. But yeah, just to maintain the skills and the movement, uh, I think that is a good idea. Yeah, and a, a big um, factor that can influence what kind of drills you would do is is your experience with your sport so how long have you been playing uh football competitively so i played basketball for like six or seven years and i got a few like uh scholarships to the u.s but um i I had like a bad concussion at the time and had to give them up took a year off and then i found football just by chance so i've been playing now i transitioned to football for i think five or six years now i was receiver for a long time and now they're putting me at like a sort of a running quarterback sort of thing. Okay, no, that, and that, that helps a lot, right? Because if, if you don't have a ton of experience, let's say you're athletic, but you don't have a ton of experience playing the sport, then your probably biggest value is going to be just playing scrimmages, practicing as often as possible and getting really good at it. But because you've been playing for about five years, some of these, these drills that the guys just mentioned 
uh, would probably provide you a lot of value. Just remember that. Remember, uh, when you're following mass performance, what you can imp- what you can expect is strength, power, durability. But what you won't get from it is improvement in skill. So practice the skill mm-hmm. along with following the program. What you don't want to necessarily do, and I want to stress this, is get really strong but also lose skill. Because then you'll find yourself on the field – uh, not necessarily any better off, even though you're stronger because you've lost some of your skill and that, your That's why I, I envision, I mean, if you're a client of mine, this is what I envision. I envision uh, having three mobility days, and you, I, I imagine that you have access to one of your wide receivers, one of your friends. Yeah. And, yeah. And, okay, so I would go down to like a, a field somewhere outside with, with one of your wide receiver friends, and I would do start the, the day with mobility work. So the both of you do some mobility drills to warm up and work on your mobility. And then you go right into your, your footwork drill. So running little routes and plays and, and dropping back. And, and that's what the rest of the day would look like. I think you doing that is going to continue to increase your skills in the sport. And then the programming will take care of everything else. Yeah. And if you don't have maps, prime pro, we'll send that over to you, Olivia. Cause I think that you're going to find a lot of value in that, especially for the areas that tend to bother you after playing or practicing really hard. So you'll pick the area that tends to bother you and then practice the movements that are in Maps Prime Pro for those areas, um, and that should help you quite a bit. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I just have one more part of the question. So I just finished actually a month ago or two months ago a 15-week like progressive overload like lifting program that I sort of found online. Um and I, I put on 10 pounds, like, you know, some muscle, whatever. Um, but I, I kind of hindered my progress with overtraining um, and, and whatnot. But I still had some progress. And But because I've put on 10 pounds, I'm noticing, like, I sort of did what you guys did. I put on the strength, but not skill specific. And I, I'm feeling it a bit on the field when I'm going to jump and stuff. So I've been trying to be in, like, a calorie deficit a little bit to, to shed some of the weight for my summer season, can you be on like in, can you do maps performance well in a calorie deficit or would you guys not recommend that? Yeah, sure. Great idea. You totally can. I just wouldn't do too big of a deficit when training really hard. But here's the other thing too, is that, uh, you know, I I don't know what your program was before. You said progressive overload. I'm assuming it was very strength and muscle building focused. Yeah. Just practicing uh, your skills, jumping, you know, lateral movement. Uh, You can actually take that strength and start to uh, kind of convert it to more performance-based strength because you can get really strong from just doing barbell squats and build muscle. And for most people, that'll make them jump higher and move faster. But if you were an athlete before and you moved really well and then you built that muscle but you didn't let the skills follow it, you might actually lose a little bit of that that ability uh, because the weight-to-strength ratio or explosive-strength ratio might change a little bit. So sometimes you don't necessarily – need to lose the weight unless it was body fat. Sometimes all you need to do is train that new weight in ways that make it uh, more beneficial for your sport. Okay, yeah, sure. That makes sense. Get used to my new my new extra eight pounds. <laughs> exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Thanks for calling. Okay, thanks so much for having me and thanks, thanks for everything. You guys are awesome. No problem. All right. Yeah, I, I I remember back in the day when I was would compete in uh, in grappling that I the, I've always loved resistance training way more than I loved any other, anything else right, and I would go through these phases where I would put on muscle, mm-hmm. and I would only do like one day a week of you know judo or jujitsu, and then I'd go back to training real hard in those sports, <clears throat> and although I was bigger and stronger, I wasn't really performing any better. Uh, yeah. And I was just like, and I knew why. It was because I lost skill, but I gained strength. I mean, skill is, if you were to list in sports performance, skill is number one. Then all the contributing factors to skill follow. But skill has got to be number one. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, and, and Justin, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't think this is uh, the three of us. This are... meeting is being recorded. <laughs> it's being recorded, Adam. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I think of the three of us, I don't think this, is, uh, this isn't my expertise, but I've trained many clients like this. And my recommendation would be, you know, at least three days of the mobility work with the skills training with the foundational days. If I saw that her 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 strength and or her training was starting to hinder her movement on the field, she's getting slower. Her reaction time isn't there. She's not improving on her skill. I'd, I would yeah. scale back another day off the of foundations and increase to another mobility yeah. and skills training day. Yeah, definitely. I think that's that's smart. And I, I do like evaluate to whether or not they're like a beginner 
beginning athlete, if they've already established a good foundational strength to work with, or, you know, if this is somebody that's a little more seasoned and a lot of times, like you don't really need to add a lot more strength to these athletes. I think that's something that, uh, you know, is, is pushed a lot on athletes, but you know, it does tend to, the, the focus gets, uh, you know, shifted in terms of like, if they just focus more on their skill or on their overall quality of their movement, you know, it may uh, aid even more in their performance than, uh, previously. So I think it's, it's really, and I had the same experience where I gained weight, uh, because my position had changed. I had to be like an inside backer versus an outside backer. So I had to gain like 20 pounds and coming back was very difficult because I didn't maintain all the skills training that went with, uh, that added weight. So just getting acclimated to the new body, uh, you know, that took time on its own. Yeah. And one more thing, and athletes don't usually understand this until much later, the biggest bang for your buck that you'll get with sports, especially if you play pretty consistently year after year, is just preventing injury. Like yes, just focus on if that, you. That's the real game. If you just focused on preventing yeah. injury, well, at the high level, at the high level, that's yeah, all. That, it's that's more on. the experience. That's it, athlete. especially yeah. at the high level. Yeah, yeah. Like, once you once you get to you know college pro and stuff like that, they don't. That's it's all about injury prevention. Yeah. Our next caller is Sean from California. What's up, Sean? How can we help you? Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to first say I uh, really appreciate all the content you pull out, put out and uh, really enjoy a lot of the podcast episodes. So um, cool, thank just you. to Thanks, give man. you some background, uh, yeah, yeah, um, just to give some background, um, I played a lot, a lot of water polo and uh, swimming when I was growing up and uh, I do have a little bit of a background in strength training, but um, right now I'm coming off a um, training protocol for a half Ironman. So just wondering which of your programs would you recommend? Um, just wanted, wanting to, go, um, as I transition out of kind of endurance training, I know you guys have talked about the benefits of resistance training and strength training. So just um, which program do you guys, would you recommend that would be a good one to start with? I mean, I know you guys have math starter, obviously, but um, I already do have a pretty strong background in strength training um, with, I mean, just the form technique of the bench squat deadlift. Um, so I wasn't sure if maybe I could go into mass performance or mass aesthetic or something, or, um, or if any of those programs would be good to, um, would be suitable to maybe combine with occasional, um, cardio or endurance training, whether that be uh, swimming or running. MAPS anabolic. Yeah. So actually a quick question, Sean, you, you just finished uh, your half marathon. How long ago? Um, half Ironman training. So it was about three weeks ago and I, I did the kind of a mock half Ironman just because all the races have been canceled for the past year. So I decided just to do it but, um, just okay. on my own without the actual unsanctioned um, event. Okay. And then for people who don't know, half Ironmans in, are insane. Uh, there's, there's, it's just a really, really uh, tough, grueling, type, com grueling yeah. type competition. Do you, would you say you're more likely to overtrain or undertrain your body? I definitely have a tendency to overtrain. I've had that issue in the past. So I know you guys have talked about um, like kind of welcoming people to change parts of the um, training plans, but I know that um, I kind of have a tendency I might overdo it. So I was wondering if you do have a certain one um, that may be better for um, combining with occasional cardio versus something that's maybe like a twice a day training. I know that wouldn't be good for me right now. Yeah, I, I would. Okay. So we definitely want to scale back for a little while. You know, they've, they've actually done studies and shown that when people train for really intense, uh, physical performances, uh, it actually t can take the body as long as months, uh, to get back, uh, it's, it's recovery ability. So it's actually causes, issues for people. And now as somebody like yourself who trains real hard, you're used to the way it feels and you, you know, any improvement feels good. So you're like, Oh, I can push myself. So it's going to be very important that you pay attention to that. So, um, Adam said maps anabolic. I think that's the perfect program for you. Uh, it's not going to overtrain your body. It's going to build lots of strength. Now, if you want to train in a way with resistance, that's more athletic minded, then I would go, uh, maps performance. Maps performance will also build a lot of strength and muscle on your body. But there's a lot. There's a special emphasis on athletic performance. So if that's like what you like to do, yeah. But I still think he would be mo if he was your client and you had the choice. What would you do? You know, anabolic, wouldn't you? It depends, right? Because uh, performance also has the mobility. It, mm -hmm. it depends on on how what he did for the Ironman training and also what he's going to stick to. Maps anabolic is definitely very straightforward 
muscle building performance has a little bit of that athletic. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of in that hybrid kind of. I, I love the MAPS anabolic in terms of phase one, and I love that protocol. However, I do love mobility training sessions in between. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you do get a lot of benefit from the trigger sessions in anabolic for that specific reason of recovery, but I would like you to focus a bit more on reinforcing your joints and, and really going through that recovery process because I'm sure there was a lot of stress and, and you know, potential – uh, you know, underlying issues that may result uh, well, in the future. I, the reason why I'm still going to keep pushing anabolic is that I think this is not only does he need this physically, I think he also needs it mentally. I think if he has a, a tendency to overtrain, and this is what's I, and not to mention we we all know what we was ideal for the next program. So mm -hmm. the ideal order would be anabolic right now, followed by performance. So we will address mobility. But yeah. right now you're going from this super high level amount of volume of training. One of the best things that he could possibly do is to reduce that down to two or three days of foundational training. If you want, and if it was a client, right, and you were, and this is where our programs are not perfect, right? So maybe to Justin and Sal's point, I would make you run anabolic, but instead of trigger stuff, I would have more mobility type focused things. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, right? So you can take and you can modify even our program. So, you know, because you guys all, I think we all agree that mobility should be focused and recovery, and that's where he should be thinking. Uh, but I also am thinking just the volume of training and performance definitely ramps up from anabolic as far as the volume yeah, of the training volume goes up. And I think he needs to go all the way down to anabolic. And I think it's going to be very hard for him. I think he's yeah, going to have to yeah. mentally challenge himself to stick to the programming. And then yeah. and then then I would move to performance yeah, two to three days a week is going to be a tough shift. Yes, yeah, sir. I mean, you, you make a really good case, Adam. So um, so do you have access to maps anabolic? I don't know because I was looking at both Matt's anabolic and performance, but I know, um, I mean, recovery is a huge component to muscle building and gaining strength back. And just with all the gyms being shut down for the past year, so I haven't really, I've really only been doing body weight training. So I was leaning towards anabolic, but um, just wanted to get some advice um, from you guys. Okay, so we'll give you Maps anabolic on the trigger session days. Uh, focus on mobility. Focus on, you know, joint movement and, you know, making your joints feel healthy. In other words, treat those days as uh, active recovery days um, throughout the whole program. It's a three-month program, and that should be good. At the end of that three months, you should feel pretty strong and good, and then MAPS performance would definitely be a good follow-up. I, I would love to see you do MAPS Anabolic and then follow the webinar that I did on uh, primeprowebinar.com. Uh, so go to Prime Pro. It's free. And literally follow that routine. I think that routine is a is a great routine. Do those on the days in between. That's right. Do those on the days in between. So follow Maps Anabolic to a T, the way it's structured on the trigger session days. Follow that mobility routine that I created a webinar around. I think that's a really good place for you to be. And then after you get through anabolic, then I would transition you into performance. That to me, that would be most ideal. And again, I'm gonna challenge you on the the mentality part because I know you're an athlete. I know you're gonna want more and you're gonna have to resist mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely get that. It's uh, my parents have been telling me the same exact thing for years. So uh, definitely appreciate um, appreciate all your help, guys. Awesome. All right. No problem. Thanks for calling. You guys familiar with the distances of uh, it's long, Iron bro? I, Iron so Man, I look. I looked it up because Iron I, Man shit is re yeah, legit. Because you got to swim, you got to bike, you got to run. It's ridiculous. Well, here it is. I, I just pulled it up because I, I don't remember the. Specific. I've trained. Let me think. Five uh, people who trained for a half Ironman, and then one of them went on to do a full Ironman. But here's a half Ironman, just so people know what, you're, what we're talking about. It's a one and a half mile swim, a 56 mile bike ride, and a 13 mile <laughs> run. So this is a half Ironman, just to yeah, get an idea yeah, of which like is half. A, which is a half marathon and a what's 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 a what's considered like the long distance for bike. Oh, what a century, yeah. hundred miles. So yeah. it's more than half of that. Yeah, right, right. So one it's and a half more, more than a half century, more than a, a half a marathon, and then also the swim all combined. It's insane. It's so when and I, that's a half marathon, so or a half yeah. Ironman. So when I train, I had a one guy that I used to train that was just really. He was actually a, uh, he was an ear, nose, and throat specialist and a surgeon. Really smart guy, high perform. Everything he did, really high performing. He hired me. For the half Ironmans, and we and we really had to feel things out, right? Because it was really hard not to overtrain him because he was doing so much biking, swimming, and running all the time. You know what it turned into? One day a week of resistance training, and and a mm -hmm. lot of those days were moderate intensity. I would say probably one to two workouts a month. We pushed the intensity. The rest of them were like mobility. Well, and, and have stuff you ever like seen? That. I mean, first yeah. of all, a lot of people don't even finish those Ironmans. 
Oh, no, the yeah. goal is to finish. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. goal is can you just complete it? And have you ever seen some people crossing the finish line on those Ironmans? Oh, yeah. Like Broken. Yeah, crawling yeah. to like finish it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Body's like all shaky. It's yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, because so when I trained the guy, I was like, we I, he would notice decreases in his performance. And so I had to scale it so far down. And, and then finally we hit the magic well, number. That's the which thing. Was, I mean, it, it takes all of your focus. Uh, you know, like that. that's the thing is the endurance part of it is going to make up the majority of what you're doing because you have to. And, I mean, I mean and, that's just the and bottom this line. Is why I'm pushing towards anabolic so hard because let me tell you, it's going to be so hard for this guy to make that switch. Yeah. I mean, the the, the, that, men, the that, mental discipline it takes to train for an Ironman is like the opposite spectrum yeah. yes. of what I'm asking you to do to go train two foundational days yeah. or three foundational and, and days. And that's actually one of the reasons why I said performance at first, because one of my fears is it'll be- <laughs> Where you ease him off a little bit? Well, yeah, that, because <laughs> it's going to be such a big like difference. Cold turkey. Like yeah. he'll do it for a few weeks and he's like, screw it. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, this is, I mean, so, that's a fair point. It's yeah. a fair point. But I think we can all agree that we know what his body needs the most yeah. yeah what his body needs the most is something more like anabolic you're right yeah uh he might be so addicted to that crazy training maybe letting easing him off you know instead of almost feeling like you're cutting cold turkey totally. our next caller is kelly from mississippi hi kelly how can we help you hi thanks so much for talking to me today i'm super excited to get your take on my question okay so once upon a time i was a gym rat uh qualified gym rat spent all the time in the gym Really loved cardio, which I know you guys love. I was a Zumba instructor, half marathon runner, Tabata hit, you name it. Um, and then really got into um, strength training, realized the benefit of strength training, tracked away from so much cardio. Um, also, uh, formerly had a pretty terrible eating disorder. Um, and I think I actually moved into more of like orthoexia. Um, and so that went on. Um, really started to pay more attention to nutrition until I got really sick and was sick for about two and a half years with an undiagnosed medical condition. Um, but then very recently, as of eight months ago, was diagnosed. I'm now on medication. It's controlled. But I am basically starting from scratch. Um, and I know I've read your book, Sal, loved it. It's a lot of really fantastic advice. I needed to hear a lot of it. Um, but I'm basically starting from scratch and as much as I hate that, um, I'm really looking at this as a clean slate, um, to do nutrition, right. To do rest, right. Um, I'm now back in the gym exercising, um, with a little bit more weight, trying to, um, build some strength and build that muscle back. But I would really love all of your opinions on what is the, what, if you had somebody that it was like clean slate, they have muscle memory, they know their way around the gym. What would be your best advice for somebody who wants to really tackle this with um, a lot of smart technique um, to really make sure that they're getting as strong as they can for life? Okay, Kelly, so, you're you're amazing, by the way. I think just oh. <laughs> yeah, this is this is great. This is really really great. But and a couple of things before Sal, I let you take off. Uh, one. Uh, shout out to Zumba because Justin is a huge <laughs> is a huge yeah. Zumba fan. Yeah, <laughs> my uh, Zumba so, people. And then Hello. and then Sal, if you could if, if you could break down what uh, orthorexia is before you get into your rant, and then then I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, so orthorexia is uh, where you're just you're really obsessed about eating clean or healthy. So it's a, it's a bad relationship with food, but the driver is I want to eat perfect. I want to eat perfectly healthy. It can cause people a lot of stress. It could. Very common uh, in bodybuilding, right? It is, and it, you know, it can take away from your relationships with other people. It can make your, your essentially what you eat takes over uh, your life um, in, in in many respects. Okay, so um, I want to I want to help you, but um, I think I could best help you if I know what the condition is that you've been diagnosed with. Now, sure. if you don't, don't want to say, okay, go ahead, tell us what it is. And, and yeah, know. so I have something called mast cell activation syndrome, and it caused a spontaneous CSF leak. Okay. Okay. So can you go into a little more detail with that? I'm assuming that as that uh, affects your central nervous system and causes your... Yes. Okay. It, yeah. So um, a CSF leak is when you tear a hole in the dura around your spinal cord. So your spinal fluid leaks out into the body and it causes your brain to sink down on top of the spinal cord, um, causes a really horrible headache. Um, it's really hard to diagnose them. Um, the mast cell activation syndrome is your immune system attacking your connective tissue so similar to an autoimmune condition but not an autoimmune condition okay this is okay that that really helps a lot okay so uh with in my experience okay now of course i want to mm -hmm. disclaimer i'm not a doctor um, sure. but in my experience i've trained a lot of people with autoimmune issues that affect 
uh, the body. Um, and in, in all of those situations, what you don't want to do is train the body harder or longer right. than you need to because that tends to trigger uh, autoimmune reactions. So if I'm training right. someone who, you know, they get really inflamed, for example, I would notice like their inflammation would kick up. So let's say the average person, I train them a little too hard, eh, they're just sore for a little longer, mm -hmm. not a big deal. With somebody who has uh, an, an overactive immune system, that can turn into weeks or months of getting back uh, to recovery. Mm -hmm. So my number one piece of advice to you is go really slow. Now, this may be hard for someone like you with your background, <laughs> right? Because mm -hmm. you're used to right. you're used to working out hard. You have a bit of a skewed um, perception of intensity. You know, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I can go low. So I'm going to say I love starter for this. Always yeah, always err on the side of going easy. Um and I would like you to treat your exercise like practice. Don't ever treat it like a workout. So when you go to the gym, forget that you're training your quads or your hamstrings or your shoulders. Think to yourself instead, I'm going to get really good at shoulder presses. I'm going to get really good at lean into the curve. technique of, of all these exercises. That's it. Just 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 treat them like skills. 100%. Go to the moderate to low intensity and just get better at the skills that will give you that'll give you way more dividends than going to work your body out like you're going to do a workout. Um, Adam said map starter. I agree. I think map starter is a great way to to get going. And again, I can't stress this enough. Err on the side of less, okay? It's better. Okay. It's better that you progress slower because you're doing too little than doing too much and knocking yourself into uh, a, ca a case where now you have to stay at home and sit in bed for the next couple months because right. you've caused the flare up. So really go right. easy, really go slow, and just remember that too much intensity or working out too hard or too long, it's not just going to be like, oh, I need to take next week off or go easier. It could turn into months of you know being into a flare up and be and be competitive with yourself with the the technique like i mean okay. watch watch the model in the videos and and the goal should be can i can i make the form look even better more controlled and better okay. and so you can still have this kind of athletic competitive mindset but just switch it from you know sweating and burning and trying to hurt and and put pain on yourself to more like can i can i make this look better than the model performing the exercise and be competitive with yourself in that slowing the repetition down and being very meticulous to how you move the weights and the position of your body as you do the exercises so and that, that's why i like starter starter has got stability ball stuff on there there's a lot of stability exercises so there's a lot of things that are going to just challenge your balance and form and technique really err on that side and even as you progress and move out of starter and maybe into another program like anabolic do not leave that mindset um i just this was actually okay. how I train my clients for most of my clients for most of my career is, you know, lay that solid foundation of just getting perfect at all the movements. Be more mm -hmm. focused on that than adding weight to the bar or repetitions. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. I actually heard you say that about um, practice um, on a previous episode. And I really appreciated that. It's not something that I had ever really thought of as a, as a person who I've always really respected weight um, and really respected technique and form and have always strived for that. Uh, but the thought of really approaching that as practice had never occurred to me. And so even this morning when I went to the gym, I thought, okay, we're just practicing shoulder presses. <laughs> we're just practicing that. And it really did change the workout. I just, I love that advice so much. So I'll um, gear my competitive nature um, towards myself at just getting really, really good at practicing all of the techniques. Yeah, because Excellent. you know the key is uh, is going to be to control that inflammatory response. Right. And, and you need some of uh, you need some of an inflammatory response. That's you know, part of how the body adapts. But in in your case, uh, the inflammatory response can trigger, you know, uh, a remission. It can get you to the point where you're like, right. oh my god, it starts to kind of get out of control. The other things I would look into right. are. Eating in ways to reduce the inflammatory response. Sleep is probably going to mm -hmm. be really important. Yes. Um, and then, yes. and this again, I'm not a doctor, so I'm just going to encourage you to look this up for yourself. But I would look into mm -hmm. uh, cannabinoids and how that may help with your body's uh, inflammatory response and your immune response. But also talk to your doctor. I'm assuming you're on immune suppressing uh, drugs. So talk to your doctor before you try uh, anything to, to help yourself out. Okay, great. 
great. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. No problem. And by the way, we're going to send you Map Starter if you don't already have it. Oh, I don't. Thank you so much. I actually was looking at the programs that you listed in the book, Sal, and was thinking, you know, would this be something I should do? Or so that that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, you actually the the programs in the books will do will do you just fine as well. But Map Starter also. But you go ahead and start with Map Starter since there's videos that okay. Go okay, okay, okay. That's great. Thank you so much. No problem. Awesome. Why do I why do I love her so much? Is, is it the accent? Just is it a the, great mentality. Is, is that what yeah, it is? Yeah. I can't tell if it's the accent or, or she's maybe got a great attitude. No, she does. I mean, you could tell that she's done her homework, you know what I'm saying? And you could tell she's got a a, a great attitude towards health and fitness, like mm-hmm. really, really cool. And yeah. talk about very unfortunate situation to be in. Oh, I, yeah. I don't think I've trained a client with that that condition. Not I've that. That's super it. rare. Yeah, but super. I've specific. trained lots of people with uh, issues that flare up mm-hmm. when the intensity gets too high. You know, right. fibromyalgia. Yeah. You know, being one of the multiple sclerosis. Yeah. Another one. I've like, had some MS. You know, you're, it's like you have. It's like exercise can be the best medicine. Resistance training in particular can be the best medicine, but like any medicine- It's all about the dose. Yes, yeah. too much becomes poison, That's literally. Right. So you have to err on the side of less and just allow that medicine to do its job. And it's hard, right? Especially when you're someone like her who, you know, what she did before. Right. You want to, you're like, you gotta oh. change what it, you know, the definition of working out. Basically. Totally. Our next caller is John from Arizona. Hey, what's up, John? How can we help you? Hey guys, thanks for taking my question. Um, I was listening a couple weeks ago and you had talked to somebody about um, splitting your workout sessions in half. And my question was, should I take my exercises and do like the first five exercises in the morning and the second five in the afternoon? Or should I take all the exercises and kind of split the sets in half and do all the exercises in the morning, half the sets, and then this, the second half of the sets in the afternoon? Yeah, this is a really, really good question. And fun one. Let's and a fun it. one. So yeah. the, the the old school way of doing it, it's called a double split routine, is the old bodybuilder style. And this was a routine that got popular in the 70s. You see guys like Arnold and Franco and you know all those bodybuilders back then. What, what they would do is they would do the first option that you said, right? They'd come in the morning and they'd do chest and back. And then later on, they'd come in the afternoon and do you know shoulders and biceps or something like that, right? Um, now, when we look at, Olympic lifters uh, or other types of lifters, it's a little bit different. They tend to do the second option where they're practicing, rather than doing 10 sets of squats all at once, they'll do five in the morning and five in the evening. Now, I've personally experimented with both, and I do have a preference. The preference I have is for the second option. I've gotten stronger oh, and better I did not, you're gonna go that by way. splitting the workout. Absolutely. So rather than doing you know four sets of, uh, you know, let's say I have to do four sets for chest, four sets for back, four sets for shoulders. Two. I'll do two of each in the morning uh, and then in the afternoon. And the reason why I changed my opinion, because I would have said the first option uh, before, is because I, I, I started experimenting with these all-day workouts where I would do, you know, three sets of the same exercises every other hour all day long. And I noticed some very interesting things. Like, I actually got stronger as the day progressed and I was able to do this tremendous amount of volume. And I noticed I got like built muscle very quickly from doing it. And I think most people benefit from that practicing the movement kind of more frequently than they would from just hammering a muscle uh, with more volume all at once. So I'm going to lean more towards the splitting up the sets uh, f- uh, for this particular question. I yeah. did not think you were going to go that yeah. way. I did not think you were going to go that way at all. You know, I, so and I, I don't disagree with you. My answer would have been like, there, there's no wrong answer here. And uh, I would encourage you actually to try both. I mean, just because the the only drawback I, I, I would think of for the way you're explaining right now, Sal, is somebody getting into the groove, right? right. So if you right. like, let's say squats, right? So let's you have, say you have four sets yeah. of squats and you're only going to do set two sets of squats in the morning. I mean, sometimes I feel like it takes me till my second or third that, squat. That's immediately what I would have thought was like, yeah, sometimes you might need that third set to really like get into, you know, the, the, the feel of it and really, you know, get into that sweet spot. But yeah, I'd, I, I, I've noticed the same thing though, splitting it up, uh, you know, and, and working on the second to uh, latter half of the day. It's like, it's just nice because now we're just reiterating on that signal you were sending earlier and, uh, you know, your body just feels the difference of that. I mean, I guess this is why I knew it was going to be a fun question because I don't think there is a wrong answer here, right? Right. So yeah. it's it's really up to up to the the user. It is, and you know what's funny? It's like I've done the double split stuff before, and I didn't notice a huge 
benefit aside from the fact that, you know, maybe if the workout was too long all at once that I have a little bit more stamina if I rest for a few hours and then come back. It wasn't a huge benefit. But when I did the set split and I would do the same exercise again later in the day, I noticed a much bigger benefit. It was like, uh, it wasn't just cutting the workout. Oh, see, I feel I disagree. So I feel like when, when I was able to, so what happens to me when we do like a full body routine, mm -hmm. right? Is, you know, legs and back and chest, they really, they really tax you. They're mm -hmm. big muscles. And so I did feel like if, you know, whatever comes after legs or back, just doesn't quite get the same intensity towards that where if I got this break it up where in the morning time yeah. I might do you know legs or back and then I go chest and shoulders and other you know later on I felt like I could give more towards my chest and shoulders because I got that rest so you know again mm -hmm. I again I don't think uh, there's a wrong answer here John I do think that this is going to be a personal preference thing uh, it would be very interesting and I'd like to hear you play with both and hear what you say yeah. mm -hmm. now you know what my you know I, I, a little bit more information I'd like here how many hours in between the two workouts are we talking um right now i'm getting up and working out about five o'clock um i've been doing the rgb bundle for the last year um and um it'd probably be around the same time in the morning and then it would probably be the earliest would probably be three in the afternoon so what's that about 10 hours between the two workouts okay oh, that's so good, that's, a, that's oh that's good that's a pretty big gap and the reason why i asked is you know adam made the comment that it takes him a few sets to get into a squat. Well, I actually find with studies that if you prime your body, that, that effect lasts for a few hours, but you're well beyond that. So you might actually find that. You might actually find that if you did half your squats in the morning, half your squats in the afternoon, you'd still need to prime and stuff just like you did in the morning. So that's actually something to consider. But I, I, I swear to God, it is very strange when I do the same volume, but increase the frequency. Uh, in other words, rather than doing four sets of bench press in the morning, if I did one set of bench press four times throughout the day, for example, I just get this like, this. it feels very anabolic. It, mm -hmm. This is where trigger session concept kind of even came from. So I would, you know, experiment with both and see how you feel. I, I think you'll know pretty quickly. Like you'll do one workout one way, do the next one the other one, the, the other way. And I think you'll figure it out pretty quickly which one your body likes better. John, do you, do you own uh, Maps Prime by chance? Um, I believe I have Prime Pro. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have Doug send you Maps Prime because if you do it Sal's way, my recommendation then would be to make sure that you prime before you sure. least lift because then at okay. least at least that will combat my challenge with mm -hmm. it, right? So my my challenge with it is the whole getting in the groove, taking me a couple sets just to get in the groove and exercise. If you do your due diligence and do a really good job of priming your body before you go into each both your morning and evening workout then Sal's way may be more favorable. But I definitely would recommend utilizing Prime for that. That's really what it's designed to do. So we'll shoot Prime over to you. When you do Sal's awesome way, uh, when you do it Sal's way, well, well, you should do it no matter what, both ways, I should say. <laughs> but I mean, it, you, that's definitely, I would put more emphasis on that. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. No problem, John. Right. Thanks for calling. Yeah, it's really weird. Um you know, when I did those workouts, it was it was such a freaking trip. Yeah, but well, you also had shorter breaks, though. Yeah, I did, but I've also done it where I have long breaks, and I actually experiment exactly with what he said. It is so freaking weird, and, mm -hmm. and the reason why I said you'll feel it right away is because I did. Right away, I did it, and I was like, "This feels very different." In yeah, my body. I, one thing that I did notice too, it is like maybe four or five hours of difference between the two sessions uh, was I, it was just wasn't as taxing. Like I, I yes. felt, you know, you know, like I, I was less likely to to have that feeling of overtraining yeah, where you with would with like the four sets in a row, where I'm like, oh, you know, like sometimes I'll push it a little too far if I'm not checking myself. Versus splitting like that, it just felt like both sessions were like. You now, know, charged. Now, Sal, when you did that, are you giving yourself a, you know, like let's say you go into a, sh a shoulder press in the, the, the morning and the evening time, are you giving yourself like a just moving the bar set that doesn't, it's a non-working set? Or are you going right into a working no, set? No, 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 no. I would do, I would still do like a five to 10 minute warm up and then I'd go into the workout, both workouts, if the gap was big. Now, yeah. when I did the all day workouts, this is the weird, this was, this was really weird. It was every other hour. I would only have to prime for the first workout. Well, yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense, yeah. right? Because you're like you said, you're already pretty warmed up. You're in good posture. You're connected there. It's mm -hmm. not a big gap, so that makes sense that you wouldn't have to prime before. But if you got a nice, 
you know, 10 hour gap between the workouts, I would imagine it's almost like restarting over yeah. again and you got to kind of prime the body, warm up set, and then go into it. Yeah, I would set. love to experiment just, and this is just, I don't think this is practical for most people, but you know, obviously we, we, this is what we do for a living. And so we could make this happen. I would love to do like, instead of doing a full body workout in the morning, three sets, each exercise, do one set, each exercise three times that day. So one workout in the morning, one workout in the afternoon, one workout in the evening, <laughs> and just note, just see, is there a difference? It's the same total volume, same yeah. work. Is there a difference in how my body responds? Well, hit, hit the way, the second way is what reflects kind of how I train now with us having a gym here. And now that I have this set up in my house, yeah. I, you know, you guys will see me. Sometimes I just do a few things here. Well, that's not my complete workout. Mm -hmm. I go home and I do a few uh, more I things. Do the same thing. Our next caller is Damien from Minnesota. Hey, what's up, Damien? How can we help you? Hey, it is uh, so awesome to be talking to you guys. Um, this is kind of unreal. <laughs> right. Cool. Um, yeah, huge fans. Uh, anyway, so I, I've gone through a um, little context. I've gone through a number of your um, programs now. Uh, I think about five uh, coming up. But I found my way to Powerlift uh, recently. Really been loving it. I'm uh, over halfway through. Um, and, uh, I've worked in the past to be able to pass all three, uh, compass tests in maps prime. Um, and I prime regularly, uh, you know, work on mobility when appropriate and stuff like that. But, uh, I've developed some in kind of intense left hip flexor pain, um, that pops up, uh, not while I lift, but kind of after the, after I lift that day or the next day. Um, and I've never had hip flexor issues in the past. I've had some issues with tight hamstrings and um, a little bit of a self-diagnosed posterior pelvic tilt that I've worked on correcting. So I've never had hip flexor pain um, before and uh, just kind of strikes me as a potential issue down the road if I uh, want to keep uh, power lifting, which I do. So I'd love your thoughts on maybe what's causing that and um, what I could do to prevent injury in the future if I keep lifting heavy. Yeah, great question, Damien. And it's so funny that you just asked us this question. So I was just talking to Marlon Shamel. He's one of our trainers on our YouTube channel. Really, really smart guy. Really strong guy. Tremendously strong for his body weight. He also competed in powerlifting recently. He puts us all to shame. And I just had a conversation with him uh, the other day. He knows his shit very good. And he, he sends me a message and he goes, you know what's weird? He goes, I was having hip issues. I couldn't figure out what it was. And what it was was my hip flexors were weak. Now, this is not common. Usually hip flexors are tight in people. You find weak hip flexors in people that are generally weak, but people that tend to lift or train often, you typically don't like work on strengthening their hip flexors. It, it, tends, to, it tends to not necessarily be a solution. But in his case, it was, his, it was weakness in his hip flexors. He strengthened them, and the pain was gone. Now, the reason why I'm communicating this to you is because you did the compass test very well, you don't have mobility issues. You followed all of our programs. Um, I'm, I, I bet I can guess you've never really tested your hip flexor strength. Most people don't. So I'm wondering if no, never. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you actually have a weakness in your hip flexors. And then the second thing I would say is to look at core stability because they're so closely connected. Look at those two things. Is your core stable and strong enough to support the rest of your body? And do you in fact have a weak? hip flexors. And if you do strengthen the hip flexors, that might actually solve uh, your issue. Uh, I could. I want to add to this. Um, Damien, have you ever squatted barefoot and looked at your feet? Uh, I've squatted barefoot um, at home, like with dumbbells, body weight, pistols, stuff like that, but not at the gym with a heavy barbell. Well, I, I, and I don't need you to load it heavy, but I would love to see you record your feet. And by the way, I'll have I'll have Doug's. It sounds like you have most of Adam's our Adam's always trying to get foot videos. Yeah. <laughs> He's scary. <laughs> He's <so> fetish. Yes. <laughs> this is not for my fetish, Damien, I promise. It's fine, I'll send it. Okay, so <laughs> if you, uh, I'm going to have Doug give you access to our private forum because this is how we use the forum all the time. And, and I'm always very careful to try and assess somebody over the podcast because this is very nuanced and very tough and many, especially for this yeah exactly mm -hmm. and especially for someone like you who, who seems to know his stuff right so i'm not going to just take a wild guess and say that something's weak or tight or, or something's wrong unless i could see you move but what i would want to see is i would love to see uh your feet in a really deep squat and see what happens now what could also be causing this is something very similar because i have a, a very similar issue 
Um, and it, and it comes from actually my left, my left foot will actually pronate when I get really deep in the, in the squat. And that pronation also internally rotates the femur, which makes it really tight. And when I'm loading the bar really heavy, I'll get some pain in that hip flexor on that side more than the other side. So I would actually want to see your feet and see if there's any discrepancy from the left to right before I just assume that you have a, a weak hip flexor. So uh, if you could do that, that would help me assess even better. But I, I agree with Sal. You could also test what he's saying. Yeah, that would be great. I'll send that. I'll send that right away. All right, perfect. Thanks, Damian. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all you do. I, I'm a I'm a personal trainer, and I, I say I get cert I got certified through Ace, but I actually learned stuff from Mind Pump. So uh, thank you, guys. Oh, awesome! Good stuff, Thanks, man. man. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was such a uh, a weird way when I heard it from Marlon, and then it made sense, right? He's like, I, I would have never because I mean, let me ask you guys, how often have you no. <laughs> has an issue been solved because you strengthen someone's hip flexors? Right, it's very rare. Yeah. But, it's, it's rare to even check that. Yes, and, and I think uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what drill that was that really exposed that for me, and I think it was. Uh, where Dr. Brink placed a book uh, on my stomach and I held my knee in and then lifted my leg up and then tried to keep uh, that from separating and just using that to, uh, you, you know, really try and like, I, like isometrically squeeze and oh, hold. I've never even heard very of that. Difficult. So yeah. you, you brought your, you had a book on your, explain that again. Yeah, so you have a book that you're, you're trying to smash into your, to your stomach and ribs basically. Oh. And then now I'm like extending my leg out. Oh, wow. And then back and trying not to separate the two. And you saw a difference between right and left? Yes, there's a discrepancy. Oh, what, yeah, a, so what a great assessment. I mean, I can feel that just by pushing on my thigh and then doing that. You yeah, can so you feel sit the, down on your butt and then uh, we'll have to do a video yeah, or something. If your make, that, make that a video. Write that down, yeah. Doug. That's a, that'd yeah, be a great Because if your video. hamstrings are tight um, and your hip flexors are trying to stabilize and so you're pulling against each other, I mean, believe it or not, it could be weak hip flexors. Not common, but if he's got like all these great mobility, he's doing all the, the yeah, compass. If he passes and, all the marks otherwise. And he, and he hasn't looked there. I'm like, well, look there and see what's going I would, on. I would also, though, always look feet first now. Of course. Yeah. But that is something that uh, I did not do as a trainer for a very long time. Yep. It wasn't until yeah. hanging out with Dr. Brink did he completely just blow my mind on how much of the stuff that we have going on all up here all is stemming from my feet and that actually is it. so I, it's my left side and it's because my left foot pronates and i still battle with it so i have to really be cautious of not allowing that to now happen. here's the difference with him is he says he has a posterior pelvic tilt i know you have an anterior pelvic tilt yeah do you think he really has a posterior pelvic tilt well that's what he said and that's what he and said he's a trainer well, so again, i, have to I trust need to watch a video that's right because really a lot of times two people conf confuse the two you're right yeah. it's you're right. because but a, because a, he's a posterior a pelvic tilt is it's, it's very normal to it's me. It's very, very rare, and it looks really weird. Weird. If you've never seen one, if you, I mean, it's like, yeah. And I mean, how often do you guys <laughs> see? Do you see it? I well, mean, yeah, because you're one right. One in a hundred. You're right. Nothing's better than seeing a video of him do right. stuff. But because he's a trainer and the way he was talking, um, and if I took his word for it, right. Posterior pelvic tilt passes all the compass tests. Pain in his hip flexor. Uh, I mean, it could be the issue yeah. that I said. But again, there's no way of knowing until we watch. It does kind of speak to a weakness there. We'll it see. does a little bit, so we'll see. Look, if you like our information, if you like the podcast, go check out our free guides. We've got tons of guides on everything from fat loss to muscle building. We have guides for personal trainers. We have guides for almost everything at mindpumpfree.com. Go check it out. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Self-image is, am I a person worthy of being taken care of? Am I a human worthy of some dignity, some respect? I have some good qualities to me. I'm not a bad person. Body image is just objective. I look in the mirror. I'm short. I'm tall. I'm hairy, bald, or I'm fat, or I'm overweight. And 